Hi, my name is Tim, and in this video, I'm going to guide you through the procedure for troubleshooting a faulty contactor in the heat pump simulator. Now, the contactor is basically a relay that, when energized, is going to close two sets of normally open contacts to power the compressor and the outdoor fan motor. Now, to begin with, we need to turn the thermostat to call for heat, so we're going to click on the system selector switch. This will also turn up the temperature setting of the thermostat, so it won't be necessary to use the arrows here. Click OK on the procedure guide at the top and review that after each step. Next, we want to take an inventory of which electrical loads are running. We're going to start at the indoor unit and we're going to remove the cover, click OK, and we can see that the indoor fan motor is in fact running as evidenced by the spinning red arrows here. So we're going to click Yes on the procedure guide. Now, we go out to the outdoor unit and is the outdoor fan running continuous? Well, no. In fact, it seems to be off completely. So we're going to click No. Next, we need to check the compressor. Now, it appears the compressor is not running based on the graphic. You could always use a clamp on ammeter and clip it on the common wire of the compressor motor to see if there's any current draw for further verification if the compressor is running or cycling. So the compressor also is not running continuous. So we're going to click No on our procedure guide. Now, is the compressor cycling or completely off? Well, it's completely off. If it's coming on and off, the arrows would spin and then they would stop. And if you had your amp meter hooked up, you'd actually see a brief period of time where you had a current draw and then it would go to zero as it turned off. But it's completely off. So we're gonna click off on the procedure guide and we're gonna open the compressor control panel. Click OK on the procedure guide. And we're gonna take some voltage readings. But before we do that, we're gonna pull out the wiring diagram and determine which components could be at fault here. Now, before we do that, here's the contactor right here in the center. It's got a coil in the base and two sets of normally open contacts. So let's take a look at the wiring diagram. If we look at the line voltage diagram, it's possible that we don't have power coming to the outdoor unit. So we could have a main power problem, but that's really gonna be the only possibility within the line voltage circuit. But if we take out the low voltage diagram, we can see that the contactor right here, when energized, will close the contacts and turn both of those motors on. So we could have a faulty contactor. It's also possible that we have an open pressure switch in series to the contactor. Now we could have a faulty switch, but more than likely if one of these is open, we have a mechanical issue such as a dirty coil or a refrigerant leak or poor airflow inside. In addition to that, the contactor is fed 24 volts through the pressure switches out of the thermostat Y terminal. So we're armed with basically four possible causes here. The contactor, the high pressure cutout, the low pressure cutout, or the thermostat. So now let's take some voltage readings and find out which of these it is. So our first step is we're gonna measure to see if our contactor is receiving 24 volts. We're going to place our leads on the glowing orange hotspots at the coil connections at the yellow and blue wire connections. And we have 24 volts to the contactor. Now let's take the wiring diagram out again for just a second. We can see the placement of our meter leads here at the contactor and we have 24 volts there. What that means is that the thermostat and the two pressure switches are both closed. So the contactor appears to be the source of the problem. But we're going to click yes on the procedure guide that we've measured 24 and we want to check the position of the contacts now. Start by measuring line side voltage and we should have 240 volts coming to the contactor from the disconnect. And we do have 240 volts. So the disconnect's not the problem. We've got power to the coil and these contacts should be pulling in. Click yes on the procedure guide and we're gonna check the low si load side voltage now, which is at the top. And this is just gonna verify if in fact the contact's closed. So we move our meter leads over here and when we do that, we have zero volts, which means that these contacts are not closing. Now, could we have a problem with the contacts? Well, sure, but more than likely the coil is open and because this is a residential unit and the contactor is a replaceable component, it's not repairable, it's not really going to be necessary to do a resistance check of the coil. We know the contactor's at fault. Again, with 24 volts to the coil, it should be energized and it should be pulling those contacts in. Now, on larger commercial equipment, uh, contactors have replaceable parts, but on this one, again, it's kind of just a throwaway uh, component. 
So now that we click no on the procedure guide that we haven't measured 240, we're going to replace the contactor. And before you do that, make sure you turn the power off. Very important to not work on live circuits. Once you've done that, click on the contactor, click replace on the menu, and that will replace the contactor and solve the problem. We need to reestablish power back to the unit and observe one full cycle of operation to determine all loads are operating properly. Again, I would pull the indoor air filter and replace it if it's dirty. Uh, and last but not least, we're going to go up to the space and just verify that warm air is being received through the registers. And based on the graphic here, it in fact is receiving warm air. So we've solved our problem. Now, if you want to review any of the steps in this procedure that we just took, simply click this top left icon and you can review each of those steps that we took in order. Good luck on all your future service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Do you want to try 3D simulations and VR HVAC training yourself? Then visit interplaylearning.com to start a free trial today.